At the end of the path is a cabin. While last time we chose to avoid this cabin at all costs, this time we're going to try taking on this challenge head on and see what happens if we actually attempt to slay the princess. The quiet place and the entity have thrown an interesting consideration for me as we bring new perspectives to the entity, alternate versions of the princess we encounter. What will she become? I hope you enjoy this new perspective, this episode, and let me know what you think in the comments. So in the basement of the cabin is a princess. Now, which version of the princess will we meet this time? That's for us to find out <laughs> in this episode. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. It absolutely will be, <laughs> I assume. Uh, okay. So here's what's interesting. The options that we're seeing now, because this is our second loop. So if this is also the first video that you've stumbled upon, know that this is the second time we've gone through this tale, uh, at least this, this, this loop. So definitely check out the first one if you haven't yet. Now, the first time I played, I was very contrarian. I was like, you know what? I don't even want to engage. Uh, the explorers will provide context. Um, I'm wondering if I go fully into it. What if I'm just like, let's go. The narrator says I'm going to slay her. Yeah, viva la revolution. Uh, let's do that. That's the spirit. There we go. Nice and easy. Make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. We met this entity, and the entity gave us a little bit of a task. We are to find different... Well, at least this is the way I interpreted the task, is as we go through these loops, we're going to be finding and <clears throat> discovering different versions of the princess. I think perspectives is the exact word that the entity used, and we're going to essentially use those as vessels to inform and like further bolster this entity. For what purpose? I don't know. Uh, so I'm wondering what if we bolster the ent entity with something a bit I don't know. More solid than the fractal version that we gave last time. Because the last version we gave was very a um, warning. Before you go <laughs> multifaceted further, to say the least. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. We don't have any options. Wow, okay. Proceed to the cabin. Now this is interesting because this cabin is not surrounded by a wall, which is what the last one was. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. So it seems that it's not only the princess who changes, the cabin itself changes as well. We only got to visit the cabin once last time because the, f the first chapter that we had, we, we pieced out of there. We just decided not to even go into the cabin. When we went into the cabin, ostensibly through our second journey into the woods, the cabin was fragmented and felt like it was built up of a lot of mishmash pieces of cabin, uh, kind of leading to oblivion. This feels very different. This is definitely a solidly built cabin. Uh, there is no mirror here, which the narrator would argue there was never a mirror there, but we know there was. And I think the idea that this is... <clears throat> An area that hasn't been touched in a long time. The air is stale. There is a layer of dust. The dagger is placed on a table. And I think the positioning is even a little different. I think this is much more on the edge. Like, this would poke me and stab me if I walked close enough without thinking about it. Um, so it already feels a bit more tantalizing and aggressive. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Right. 
I guess, I mean, we, we went in with the Viva sentiment, so let's take the blade. We don't have to use it, but let's take the blade and you see what happens. You take the blade from the table. It'd be rather difficult to slay the princess and save the world without it. Goodbye piano music? Oh, did I... I need to avoid saying, did I make the wrong choice? Because the, the screen at the start of the game absolutely said there are no rights, no wrongs, just different perspectives. But I'm feeling like I am <laughs> unsure of my choice right now. Let's enter the basement. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Again, I think that's a bit... <laughs> I don't know if I agree with that, narrator, but let's go. Her voice carries up the stairs. Who's there? Oh, she feels like she's on edge. She's prepared for us. She sounds dangerous. It's almost as if she's the one in charge down here. Mm -hmm. I agree, hero. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> so we could come in just saying a little neighborly hello. Uh, we could say just checking in on you. Hey, I think I'm here to kill you. I don't know if I want to say that. Um... Ooh, what do I say? I will just continue down the stairs. Let's wait until we see her before we say hello. Good. You're still listening to reason. Don't know if you reason is what I'm listening to. And lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's so coldly beautiful. Is she really a threat to the world? Snap out of it, hero. <laughs> this is not the time to become bewildered, betwixt, or fall in love with this princess. Um, I am on edge. This, the room feels different, too. I think in the last time we were in this cell, the window felt like it was a bit larger and was a bit closer, like the room wasn't as wide. So the room feels different here, too. Focus on the task at hand. And there you are. Are you here to kill me or something? Haha, <laughs> this knife in my hand, is that what's giving this away? So we could say, what? No way. Why would you even think that? But this is, this is just my traveling knife. Um, you caught me, I'm here to slay you. <laughs> no, no, uh, uh I haven't decided yet. I'm here to talk. Steal your nerves and step forward. I think if I'm going to go through, I don't want to get distracted. We learned what happens when we get distracted. So we are going to simply just step forward, see what happens here. You step forward, your grip on the blade tightening as you steal your resolve. Oh? No talking then? Fine. What even makes you think you can kill me? I don't know. I'm probably chained up in this basement for a reason, right? <laughs> and if that knife is the only weapon you have, you'll have to get close enough to use it. Yeah. So, you should just drop it. Best not to risk finding out what I can do. Duh, I don't know. <laughs> She's unarmed. If you hesitate now, it'll be too late. End this. What if she isn't bluffing? What if she kills us? Are you sure she's not armed? Say I'm sorry? Can we just talk? I'm not dropping the blade. Drop the blade? <laughs> or slay the princess? Ah. <sighs> I 
I don't know. I'm like, maybe we could just talk, but also I remember I came into this with the idea of Viva la Revolution. We're supposed to slay the princess and, and do the thing that we couldn't do last time. And I feel like if, I, if I'm going to say I'm not dropping the blade, what is the point of that? I should just slay the princess. So we are just going to try and see what happens when we follow the narrator. We are not going to hesitate. We, even though we are hesitating right now, but we're not going to hesitate in the, in the world of the story. We are going to slay the princess. You lunge forward without a moment's oh, hesitation. Oh, so sorry. I don't know. You feel <gasps> flesh easily give way and look down to see your blade already sinking deep into her heart. We can see our, our arm and the feathers and everything. Oh. This is it, isn't it? I'm almost embarrassed. I should have seen that coming. But I have to wonder. Oh no. Do you actually believe this was enough to kill me? <laughs> it's like she's convinced she can't die. Yes. Even as she lays there dying, she entirely believes herself to be alive and well. But it's over, isn't it? She stopped breathing moments ago. That arrogant look still plastered on her face. Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> but is it over? Really over? No, I don't know. Of course it is. She's dead. I'm not sure. I feel like she has to have some kind of trick up her sleeve. Of course not. Yeah, of course not. That was too easy. I don't know if she has a trick, but this was, this was too easy. This is, something's wrong. I'm scared. Oh my god. It's over. Don't get all worked up. I am worked up, narrator. <laughs> we should make sure. What's the harm in checking for a pulse? No, there's a lot of harm, hero. This is not going to happen. Oh, God. Oh, God. I really don't think you should do that. No, I agree with the narrator. For once, we should not... And why shouldn't we? Is there something you're not telling us? I've told you everything that's happened with complete accuracy. The princess is dead. Your blade pierced her heart. There's no coming back from that. <sighs> Never, never as simple as you would think. We could remove the blade. We could check for a pulse. You're right, she's dead. Let's just get out of here. Oh, I just, I feel like if I touch her, if I go for the blade, there is something that's gonna grab me and it's not gonna be good. And so I, you know what? I've seen horror movies. You're right, let's just get out of here. We did our job. Let's get the reward that you mentioned last time, right? Yes, exactly. It's over. <laughs> I'm so scared. With your work done, you make your way back up the stairs, closing the door to the basement behind you. Where did this guy go? There were stars outside before. Oh my gosh. No. Why do I feel like we've done something terrible? No. You did kill someone. Greater good or not, something would be very wrong with you if you didn't feel at least a little bad. But it was for the greater good. One of these days that will sink in and help ease your guilty conscience. No, no, no. But that day isn't today. Let's just get out of here. Leave. You open the cabin door, ready to return to a world saved from certain doom. Oh, no. Only... A world saved from certain doom isn't what you find. Instead, what you find is nothing at all. Where a lush forest stood mere minutes ago, the only thing in front of you now is the vast emptiness of some place far away. What, what happened? Everyone is fine. It's just that you and the cabin are now far away from them. No. Don't worry. You'll be safe here. This is good. Everyone is happy. You'll be happy. No, narrator. This was a sneaky trick. That's bullshit. Let me out of here. Okay, I was kind of hoping I'd get a better ending for saving the world. Yeah, wait. So everyone else is happy because we were sent into oblivion. Did she even need to die anyways? <gasps> this is bullshit. Let me What's out of here. What's done is done. And there's no going back now. This is what's best for everyone. Trust me. Never trusting the narrator again. Not completely. Time passes. 
You can't be sure if it's days, or months, or years, or even decades. It's all a wonderful, boring blur. You've never been happier. Lies. Hey, we're not just going to stay here forever, right? <laughs> Didn't you hear the narrator? I'm happy. We're happy. Um... No, I'm going to say hell no. Do you have any idea how to get us the heck out of here? I do, but you're probably not going to like it. Oh my gosh, are we going to have to go back and grab the dagger? The blade. We can use the blade to get out of this. I knew it, I knew it. I can it. hear everything you say, little voice. There's only one thing it would want you to use that blade on, and I'm afraid that thing is you, dear hero. He's right. It's the only way out. Oh my god. Do you hear that? It wants to take this happiness away from you. It wants this wonderful place to end. This is not wonderful, not? though. There's more for us to do, and the only way for us to do it is to take that blade and use it. Don't you dare. <laughs> Wouldn't using the blade, you know, kill us? Wouldn't be dead? I mean, our, we're basically dead right now. What is this liminal purgatory that we're in. How astute. You are absolutely correct. Using the blade to kill yourself would kill you. Okay, narrator. And you shouldn't I do it. Don't appreciate that tone. In a sense, we die. But looking at things from another angle, are we even really alive anymore? This place, it's nothing. It's absolutely nothing. It's just the same thing. Constantly. Forever. Mm. I know this is out there, but trust me, I know using the blade will work. That little voice didn't want you to slay the princess. It didn't want you to be happy. No. No, I, I trust the hero a little bit more right now than the narrator, because the, what the narrator, def narrator defines as happy is definitely not the same version for me uh, as happy. So I will say anything to get out of this hell. <sighs> Thank you. I made this happy little place for you. Is this not a good enough reward for saving the world? An eternity of bliss? You... you ingrate? You ingrate, narrator. This Fine. is not the reward Whatever. we wanted. For the first time since time stopped meaning anything, you throw open the door to the basement and walk down the stairs. Absolutely. The princess's <gasps> body is dust and bones, though the blade you used to slay her is still as pristine as the day you first held it. You pick up the blade, you stab yourself, and you die. How unceremonious. Jeez, narrator. The end. Nice knowing you. <laughs> Chapter 2. The Spectre. Uh-oh. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. Does this seem darker to you? I don't know. This seems like it's a little darker. You're to here me. to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Oh, you bastard. You're in for it now. I'm wise to your tricks. Yeah, I'm going to say that. My tricks? What on earth are you talking about? We've just met for the first time. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. That's fine. It wasn't very hard to kill her last time. We'll just do it again. I need to write down the different voices that we've heard thus far. We've had the voice of the hero. We've had the voice of the contrarian. And we now have the voice of the cold. Well, if for whatever reason you're Not going to quite insist nihilist, that this has but definitely before, disconnected. at least your heart's in the right place. Um, let's assume I'm telling the truth, and all of this really did already happen. Why should I listen to you? Why should I bother doing anything? Those are two Because we are trapped in a questions, loop. But fine, I'll indulge you if that's what it takes to get you moving. Let's say for a moment that this really is the second time you've met me, or, or at least a version of me. If you're back here, I'm assuming you died, which probably only happened because you didn't listen to me. Okay, I mean, technically we did not listen to you, but, but, we did what you said, and it led to not a good outcome for us. Oh, we listened to you plenty. 
We slew the princess just like you asked us to, and then you locked us away in an empty void for eternity. So we slew ourselves, too. What he said. Well, if you killed yourself, then you weren't listening to me, because I would never want you to do that. Believe it or not, I care about you. Why would the narrator want us to stay alive, seemingly, but not the princess? And I believe your other question was something along the lines of, Oh, what's the point of doing anything? If you're asking that, it sounds to me like you're making the rather dangerous assumption that your actions last time around didn't have any consequences. What do you mean? Of course there weren't any consequences. We slew the princess, the world outside the cabin disappeared, we died, and now everyone's right back where they started. That sounds pretty consequence-free to me. Yes, but in this purely hypothetical scenario, that begs the question of how you got back here. Did time simply rewind itself, or were you instead transported to a different world entirely? That's what I'm wondering. Had you failed to slay the princess, what would have happened to everyone in the place you left? It doesn't matter, because we didn't fail to slay her. And if she's really back, which I doubt, it'll be just as easy to do it again. But after that nasty trick you pulled on us, maybe she's not the only one around here in need of slaying. Oh, snap. Just stay focused, will you? Yeah, the narrator didn't like that. Let's talk about this princess. Just be quick about it. Um, if anything, the world ended after I slew her. When I tried to leave, everything was gone. That's a good point. How do we know we didn't have things backwards? Maybe slaying the princess was what ended the world, not the other way around. Yes. Maybe this whole thing was a trick to get us to end the world. And now we get to go through the whole charade again, wholly aware of what's waiting for us at the end. Because what? Last time, when we had the princess amalgamation, the fractal princess, that merged into herself, the thing that took her was the mirror. But there was no mirror this That's time. That's assuming she's alive in that cabin. We did kill her, after all. You're going to find her in the cabin. If the princess had actually been slain, you wouldn't be here. And let me assure you, killing her will not end the world. I don't know what you think happened to you last time, but it's a load of nonsense. You'll get your happy ending. I promise. Well, that's exactly what we're afraid of. <laughs> yeah. Really? Living happily ever after sounds that bad to you. Oh well, there's no use arguing over your masochism. The cabin awaits. Womp womp. Um... Last time around, I stabbed her in the heart and she died. How can someone like that end the world? Now this is kind of a moot question because I know that last time something happened where the world did end, even though I didn't stab her in the heart. Although I did sort of break her in the sense that I kind of made the fractals happen, so I don't you know. You just can. You'll have to trust that what I'm saying is true. Who locked her in that basement? What is this place? People locked her in that basement, and I told you what this place is. It's a path in the woods. Don't overcomplicate things. Uh. Uh, if people locked her away, why couldn't they slay her? Why is this falling on me? Look, I'm not supposed to say this, but it's because you're special. You're the only person capable of doing this. Call it a prophecy, if that helps, but it's just the way things are. <sighs> yeah, no, excuse me. That's not, oh, no, no I hero. No, we were special. Hero, no. <laughs> snap out of it. Of course the hero would love to hear that he's special. Of course we're special. You're being cagey, narrator. What aren't you telling me? I've told you everything you need to know. Going into more detail will just overcomplicate an otherwise very simple situation and make your job more difficult. This is boring. <laughs> he's clearly not interested in talking. So let's just do as he says. And maybe he'll stop bothering us. Fine, Great. that's now, all. If you don't mind, the whole world is waiting with bated breath for you to save it from ruin. Sure, but there is no one in this world that we've seen other than ourselves. Oh, 
before you go any further. The princess and I guess our voices in the narrator. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. She won't be a problem. Let's proceed. The interior of the cabin is cold. The mirror's back. A soft odor of dirt permeating the air. Cobwebs flutter in the corners. You can hear wind whistling outside, banging the shutters against the windows. The only furniture of note is an elegant antique table with a pristine blade perched on the edge. All right, so this is a very different cabin than we saw the last time. This is almost in a weird way. It's still dilapidated, but it's not as untouched as the last version. We've got ornate, more detailing around the doors here. We have the mirror. We have some drapes and the table is a bit more delicate than before. And of course, the dagger. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. It feels like no one's been here for a long, long time. Like I've been saying, she's dead. We killed her already. Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. Um, this whole cabin is different than last time. Very different. Maybe that's because you haven't actually been here. I hope this means you'll finally drop that ridiculous second life proposition. You haven't died. You certainly haven't already slain the princess. So focus up. A lot's riding on this. You didn't say anything about the mirror on the wall, and I bet you he's still gonna gaslight me. That's because there isn't a mirror. There's a table, the blade sitting on the table, and the door to the basement. There's nothing else in here. You lie. There's definitely a mirror. Again. There isn't. Who cares if there's a mirror? Let's just go into the basement and find her body so we can be done with this. I care about whether I'm being lied to. As do I. I'm not lying to you. Use your eyes. There is no mirror. Why would I lie about something so meaningless? What good would a mirror even do? Let you waste time preening yourself instead of doing what needs to be done. Okay. So if the mirror isn't of this world, maybe it, again, the mirror is what took us to the entity last time. I wonder if the narrator knows the entity and that other world exists at all. Let's approach the mirror again. You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. This really isn't funny. Wipe it clean. You reach and forward again, and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. But it I was there a second ago. Someday it'll work. And now it's gone. Let's not spend much longer worrying over it. Clearly it's not even important enough to be acknowledged. So now here's the thing. Do we take the blade again? I worry... What happens if we take the blade? But I feel like by taking the blade the first time around, we've already established the princess that, I mean, we did kill her last time. So I feel like we might need a little bit of uh, self-defense perhaps this time around. So let's take the blade. You take the blade from the table. It will be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. And we'll enter the basement. The door to the basement groans open, revealing an old banister and a creaky wooden stairwell. Everything is coated in a thick layer of dust, and you can feel it settle into your lungs as you breathe in the stale air. The very building itself feels dead. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. I feel like the narrator, if the princess was living in a penthouse suite in the most beautiful city in the world, the narrator would say, if the princess lived here, slaying her would be doing her a favor. The room below <laughs> is silent. Silent? Nobody's here, naturally. No. As much as I appreciate the optimism, you shouldn't be so sure. I guess we'll just have to go down and see. 
some differences again just highlighting them so that as if you're just listening and, and having this on a different monitor or just listening in general the basement here is definitely different the stairs are not like they have a banister there is drapery ripped drapery on the walls and instead of cobblestones it's wood it feels like we're in a haunted house and with the chapter title the specter i am nervous that it's gonna be a ghost <laughs> as you descend the final step Oh. The form of the princess comes into view. A skeletal body lying in a heap on the floor, its wrist still bound to the oh. wall by a thick chain. Okay. She's definitely dead. I'm scared. <laughs> it's just like I told you. Before you have a chance to finish your thought, the top of a head appears from underneath the floor. No. A knife would be useless. Two deep-set eyes stare up at you, followed by a mischievous skeletal grin. Oh my god! <laughs> and finally, the rest of the body floats so up cute. to join the head. Wait, this isn't right. What's going on here? A g -g -g ghost! <laughs> oh. Wow. How absolutely terrifying. Voice of the cold, totally unpulsed. What's a ghost supposed to do to us? Probably haunt us, cold. Oh. It's you. Hiya, Keller. I was hoping to see you again. Oh, I have some issues with how our last meeting went. I'm sorry. I don't know. Oh, God. The princess drifts across the room into your orbit, gently running her fingers across your shoulders and down your neck as she circles. Oh, my God. Her touch is cold and ethereal. Formless, yet real enough that her icy fingertips send shivers dancing across your skin. So she has a body, and she's right there. That means we could kill her again. Ah. Uh, if we wanted to. I don't think this is how it works, Cold. <sighs> Slay the princess, wait and things... Oh my gosh, this art is so good. Um, I mean, what is a knife... Like, just because we can feel her does not mean she has a body that we could stab again. I'm gonna wait. Prop both are good. I, I see both of these ending in doom. But I let's see wait. you brought that annoying knife again. So, are you waiting for a chance to use it? Or are you here for something else? I don't think I can use it on you. Um... So we can say, see, this is exactly what I was trying to tell you about in the woods. This already happened. We killed her. So that's speaking to the narrator. We could talk to her directly and say, I killed you. What are you doing not being dead? We can ask, do you know why you came back? That's kind of interesting to me. Because we still don't know exactly why we are in this loop. Like, why cannot, why are, why can't we finally slay the princess or finally save the world? Stop playing the victim. You threatened me last time. I'm sorry I killed you last time. I shouldn't have done that. Uh, I don't know if I want to say that. Do you want me to die? Do you want me to kill myself to satisfy some sort of sick revenge fantasy? Because I already did that and I wouldn't, and it wouldn't be hard to do it again. Ooh, dark. I'm sorry, is there any way I can make it up to you? The people who wanted you dead tricked me and the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Let's team up. Kind of compelling. Uh, what do you want from me? Oh my gosh, there are so many options. If I knew I'd wind up having to talk to you again, I wouldn't have slain you. <laughs> A little bit of an awkward moment. I died too, and I'm not floating around like you are. What happened? Why am I different? Why are you different? That's a good question. I like that one. You're dead, or at least mostly dead. What can you even do to hurt me? Nope, that's tempting fate. Not going to do that. At least not this time. After I killed you, this cabin, I want to say it teleported? It wasn't in the woods anymore. Time stopped mo mo meaning anything, and I had to kill myself to escape. I guess I should tell you why I was going to send to, I was sent to kill you. You were going to end the world. I don't see any sense in ex explaining that. At least right now. I was told you were going to end the world. Clearly slaying you isn't going to work. What do you want? <laughs> okay, team, I'm out of ideas, thoughts. Uh, if you're dead, then there really isn't much for me to do, is there? I guess I'll get going. <laughs> yeah, no, that that seems like certain death. Uh, or we could slay the princess. 
I really, God, there's so many. One thing I really enjoy about this game is that the dialogue options all seem to be things that I genuinely would want to explore. Um, a lot of times with sort of these narrative adventures that allow you to pick from dialogue options, I feel very restricted. Like I don't feel like my actual thoughts or questions are represented, but what's really neat is that I have a couple of questions that rep are represented here and a couple of questions I didn't know that I was thinking that now I see them I'm like, oh, that's a good option. Um, I'm There's so many to pick from, but I'm going to say I died too and I'm not floating around like you are. What happened? Why am I different? And why are you different? I hope you don't hold grudges. Please, I would love to have a discussion. Let's go. You don't look dead, killer. The princess grabs your wrist, a sudden shock of cold flowing all the way up your arm, her eyes still fixed on yours as you try to squirm out of her grip. And you don't feel dead either. Uh-oh. She lets go and pulls away. Your fingertips tingle painfully as the chill subsides. I'm less interested in why you are, or how you are, and a lot more interested in what you are. What am I? I've tried to leave on my own. Before you came back to me, I explored every inch of this place, if even the spaces between the walls. But I never found a way out. I always wound up right back here. I just want to go home. I'm so cold and alone here. But you can come and go as you please, can't you? So, let me hitch a ride. Uh, oh, 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 what? After you, <gasps> you owe me. Oh my god, that scared me. Oh god. Absolutely not. <laughs> she, she... Is she asking if she can possess us? I think so. She is. And I hope I don't need to explain why you can't let that happen. It would be catastrophic if she managed to escape this place. And if you let her in, there is very little anyone could do to stop her. Would she be able to see us if we went along with it? Probably. Now isn't that an interesting thought? We could finally bring her face to face with him. Him? I wonder what she would have to say to the one who wants her dead so, so badly. Oh, like the narrator? The narrator's in my head. Am I the narrator as well? Wait, I didn't even think of that. <sighs> you won't like how things play out if you go down this path. What if I say no? This would be just temporary, right? That's this naive question. Um... If I let you in, do I still get to be in control? I don't believe that, even if she said yes. Before I agree to anything, we need to talk about what happens after you leave this place. I was told you'd end the world. Sounds great. The answer's no, or I need to think on this. Let's explore. Would you allow us to maintain control? I, I think I know the answer, but we'll see. Sure. Why not? Mm-hmm. That doesn't sound very reassuring. Nope. It could be the best way to trap her for good. Doesn't seem like it would be very easy to end the world from inside someone else's body. No, Cold, you... That is a very dangerous train yeah, of Yeah, no, I don't think so. Um, what if I said... No? I feel like you would just do it anyways. Um... Okay, you know what? Let's just say, what happens when we leave this cabin? If we were to say yes. And what? You just, just believed that? You killed, killed me without giving it any thought? That's cold. Yes, it was. I will, I, I will say, I will agree with that. That's rich coming from her. Every time she touches us, it's like we freeze over. She was right, though, but that's neither here nor there. What's done is done. What we do from this point forward is all that matters. Let's try not to let emotion get the better of her. Well, were you going to end the world? I don't know. I just wanted to leave. I still just want to leave. 
You didn't answer my question. Do you want to end the world? The only thing I've ever wanted was to leave this place. It's still the only thing I want. Okay. Um, what are you going to do if I help you get out of here? I don't know. Maybe I'll just fade away. Finally able to rest once I'm free from my unfinished business. Maybe I'll find someone to haunt. Maybe I'll haunt you. You're already haunting me. <laughs> it's a tough question. Asking someone what she's going to do with her life. Or afterlife. The princess leans in close and pauses, the frigid air between you stale and unmoving. Especially when someone is dead. She pulls back with a playful giggle. <laughs> I don't think most living people could answer that, either. Does anyone actually know who they are or what they want? That's a fair question. That's a fair response. But I could probably, most definitely, tell you that anything I do is not going to be related to ending the world. So you still didn't answer my question. Even if you don't want to end it, does letting you out of here mean the world is going to end? It does. Okay, narrator, I wasn't asking you. We're I know not your asking answer. you. We've heard your whole speech already. <laughs> Thank you, hero. <laughs> I really, really don't, don't know. know. I'm not lying to you. I promise. The world doesn't matter. All I might remember is that I'm supposed to be there. There? Not here? I'm just supposed to be a part of it. It's its home, I think. Hmm. But what does it mean for anything, Dad? I ended, but I also didn't. And you ended too. But here you are. And you don't, and you don't even look any different. That's true. I'm not so sure endings are real. Leave it at that. Okay. Um. Wow, we have a lot that we could potentially explore. Let's say... Um... Well, let's see. What about the cabin? Last time, the cabin teleported, and it wasn't in the woods anymore. What say you? You poor thing. That must, must have been, been so frightening for you. Yeah. You know, after everything we've been through, it's nice to see someone finally sympathizing <laughs> with us. Simple. This whole simple thing's hero. been an ordeal, hasn't it? She doesn't mean it. It yeah, serves you right. Yeah, she doesn't mean it, see? I was pretty scared, too. When you stood there not saying a word with a knife clenched in your fist. But now you know how bad it hurts to get stabbed in the chest. It sounds like you got exactly what you were owed. Ugh. See, this is exactly what I was trying to tell you about in the woods, narrator. This already happened. We killed her. Yes, obviously things are strange right now. I think it's safe to say that you've seen something, something you shouldn't have seen. Whatever worlds you've hopped between, whatever versions of me you've met, None of that matters now. There's no changing what's already happened. But you have a job to finish. Finish how? We already did what you told us. And now she's a ghost. You haven't tried slaying her yet this time, though, have you? <sighs> Rich coming and from the narrator. What? Yeah, what do we do then? Then you'll have saved the world. I think he's asking about what happens after we save the world. If that's even still an option. What do you mean, after? You already know what we mean, don't you? So why don't you go ahead and tell us? Are you going to try and lock us away in a timeless void again? Because I didn't much care for that. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lock you anywhere. What an interesting choice of emphasis. Mm -hmm. Do you know why you came back, princess? How should I know? Why does anyone come back? Maybe I have unfinished business with you. Or maybe you have unfinished business with me. All I know is there's a hole in my chest. Not the big obvious one that you put there. There's something older and deeper. Mm -hmm. okay. A nagging reminder that I'm not where I'm supposed to be. Okay. I wonder if that hole in her chest is referring to perhaps how she is maybe a perspective that needs to be re reunited with all the other perspectives with the entity. Um, 
Do you want me to die? Are we putting this to a vote? Because personally, I prefer <laughs> if we didn't die again. I mean... If okay. that's what it comes down to, that's what it comes down to. But I don't see the point of offing ourselves just yet. No, but I'm curious what she would like. Oh, that's sweet of you to offer. But killing yourself wouldn't help either of us. It would seem that everyone here is in agreement except for you. <laughs> I shouldn't have to tell you that you shouldn't kill yourself. So please, try to keep your suicidal tendencies in check. I was just seeing what the general like consensus said, was. I just, I just want, want, to want to go home. Mmm, okay. I think the other questions I don't necessarily think I need to know the answers to. I, I don't feel... I, I feel like I've heard versions of what responses probably would be to some of these questions already. Um, I could apologize. I think if I asked if there's any way I can make it up to you, she'd probably be like, well, let me possess you. Hello. I already said that, but let's let's see if let's see if she has a different response. You already know what I want. Yep. Let me in. <sighs> okay, fine. Um If you can go through walls, she already explained that she's tried to leave and she wasn't successful. And I feel like she would have explained a little bit more context why. I, I don't think she knows. Um, I don't want to tempt her because I'm pretty sure she's already proven she can go corporeal. Is that the word when she becomes like more physical? Like we can feel her. And I do not want to tempt her into harming us um, before, before at least we have the chance to defend ourselves. Um, you threatened me last time. This one's an interesting one. I'm curious the threat that she provided. Is it because she saw the knife? Because when we saw her in the fractal version, there was a lot less, like, there was a threatening aura, but I feel like there she was less forwardly aggressive to us. And I wonder if it's because we held the knife in our hand. Well, yeah. You probably brought a knife with you. Mm -hmm, was I supposed, supposed to just welcome you with open arms when you obviously had stabbing on the mind? Okay. You know what? I respect that. <laughs> Let's say that knife could have been for anything. It could have, but it wasn't. You, you can't blame, blame me for threatening a would-be knife-wielding murderer. Especially when that would-be knife-wielding murderer became an actual knife-wielding murderer. Point taken. Um, okay. Let's get you out of here. Oh, I don't know if I want to do that. I've given enough thought. The answer is no, I can't let you out and I won't let you possess me. If you're dead, then there really isn't much for me to do, is there? I guess I'll get going. <laughs> That's absolutely, I don't know. Um, let's put it to the team. Any thoughts before we maybe we make a final try. decision? Violence. Oh, okay, it's worked for us so no. far. She's a ghost. Who says ghosts are immune to violence? Common sense? There's nothing common or sensible about common sense. Action and observation are the only things that matter. Fine. Then let me observe that the acts <laughs> of killing her and killing ourselves haven't got us much of anywhere. We're still back in this cabin, we're still dealing with her, only now she has a good reason to hate us. There I is that. I suppose you have a point. Do you have any ideas, then? I don't know. Maybe we do what she wants. Maybe we let her possess us and walk out of here. We could. Unexpected. It could be something different. I like different. Well, um, let's see what the narrator has to say. Absolutely not. If you walk her out <laughs> of here, she's going to end the world. But is that really so bad? Yes. It is, by its very definition, bad. But those are the only options, aren't they? Violence, or doing what she wants. Or just leaving her down here. Though ignoring a problem is rarely a solution. I am less inclined to just leave her down here. I don't think that serves nobody at this point. I think...
I'm hoping perhaps because if if we're able to maybe reconcile our relationship a little bit with the princess, offer our body as a vessel to get her out and reunite her home, maybe, maybe she won't just instantly kill us or the rest of the world. The princess swims through the air in front of you, pausing for a brief moment as her dark rimmed eyes stare deeply into yours. There's a hunger in her gaze. You're really not trying to make it up to me, aren't you? Thanks for being a pal, killer. I mean it. What are you doing? Don't just let her in. How many times do I have to tell you? I'm scared. She rushes forward and then she's gone. A sharp Whoa. chill spreads across your body. It starts in your chest. A freezing numbness flowing out from your heart, all the way down your limbs, your mind growing cloudy and confused as it settles over your very soul. I'm not sure I like this. Can we get a do-over? Oh, we're just freezing. Okay. I'm afraid it's too late to stop now. The numbness gives way to a stabbing pain, your muscles twitching and convulsing violently, each involuntary movement causing more waves of agony to ripple across your body. You collapse to the floor, and everything goes dark. Come on, you. You've got to get up. I know everything feels heavy right now, but we still have to get out of here. It's not done yet. Your eyes Whoa. flick back open as you get your bearings, your vision swimming as... So this is what it's like to be you, huh? Disembodied voice narrating your every move? What? So, it doesn't work like that for you? Clearly it doesn't. Or she wouldn't have commented on it. Oh my gosh, now we have multiple... Like, well, we already had multiple voices, now we have four voices in our head. All these shards of broken glass on the floor. Are they also supposed to be you? What? Hey! I'm not a shard of broken glass, I'm... Like broken fragments of a mirror, perhaps? It's okay. You can finish your thought. I'm... a voice? I'm me, is what I am. Who cares what we are? We exist. That's all that matters. You don't have to fight. We'll all be out of here soon. She seems much more hopeful and kind than before. No, it matters. What we are matters. If I'm a shard of broken glass, then that raises some questions about certain other voices in here too. Again, the narrator, who I kind of assumed was an external voice, but if that's another voice that's directly in my head, who's to say that the narrator isn't like the voice of the hero or the voice of the contrarian or the voice of the cold, where it's just another form of me? I'm clearly the same thing you are. No, I'm talking about the narrator. They're not listening to me. Do they not listen to you either? No, they don't. No, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about him. You don't need to know what I am. You just mm. need to know that I'm different from you. More important. Wow, so, okay. You're the one who pulled the strings and made me dad. I can tell you don't belong here. You're barely even there. Oh. Like the shape of something left behind. You're more of a memory than a person. Thank you for that bit of intel, princess. That's rude. You're kind of like me, actually. Whoa, okay. Just going to ignore her. You push yourself off the ground. The princess is nowhere to be seen. Oh, because I'm in here with all of you. Everybody knows that. Mm. I'm setting the stage. The room is empty because you made a spiteful, idiotic, and all-round foolish decision. The narrator always thinks I'm an idiot. You don't have to let him get to you. You're better than that. You're starting to make things right. Am I, though? I don't know. <sighs> this is infuriating. Just whatever you do, you can't leave this place. It's not too late to fix this. Probably. I, I can't think straight. There's too much noise. It's okay. We're almost out of here. Just take it one step at a time and everything will be fine. Everything won't be fine if you listen to her. One way or another, this is all going to end. Wouldn't it be nice if he ends with it? I find it quite interesting that Cold and Contrarian both do not like the narrator very, very overtly. Uh, Hero also. Wouldn't that be nice? There's only one way to find out. Slay the princess. Does that mean we take ourselves out again? I'm going to try leaving the basement. 
Let's see what happens. Your legs, weary with the weight of the princess's spectral form, and clumsy with the cold that still pervades them, stumble towards the stairs. I'm just trying to get home. You don't have to act like it's the end of the world. <laughs> fun, f- fun phrase you-, you use in that sentence. Also, your voice sounds a little clearer. But that's exactly what you leaving this place is going to be. You don't know that. I do. Wait, if she has a home to go back to, doesn't that mean that her leaving won't end the world? Maybe her home isn't of this world. It doesn't mean that at all. It could mean that wherever her home is, it's outside of the world. Yeah, but it has to be somewhere, doesn't it? And if it's somewhere, then it's part of the world. I suppose it's all a matter of perspective. Perspective, Where does the world end and something else begin? Does the destruction of one open a door to another? Or is it the same world reborn? Against the backdrop of the inane conjecture of meaningless little voices, (laughs) your body continues its ascent up the stairs, staggering through the open door. I love that we're now seeing this from the other side, because the table is now on our left, because we're leaving the basement door, and now we're looking at the front door. Now, this is good. We still see stars. We still see the sky. Our vision is still uh, murky because of the specter's possession, but... This is, this, is, this is going well so far, comparatively. For how much you hate her, you aren't doing a whole lot to stop us from leaving this place. Don't tempt the narrator. Maybe the bossy one doesn't actually hate me. Maybe he even likes me. Or maybe he just knows that he's been in the wrong. Maybe he's trying to make amends, too. I don't believe that, but that's gracious of you to even say. Not at all. I'll have you know that I do hate you. And I will continue to hate you for as long as I am able. It's just the weight of it all. It's too much for me to do anything other than describe and dictate. But again, also, I don't think the narrator would ever have the power to change the story. Really? Right? Right? Because the narrator just narrates what is there. The narrator does not create like an author would. I don't know. And wine. (laughs) This body wasn't made to hold you and the princess. If you want to renege on your cataclysmically terrible decision a minute ago, well, you're the only one that can make that happen. This body wasn't made? That's an interesting phrase. I don't know if I should be reading into that or not. Let's trudge forward, though. We have no other option. We've committed. You continue slowly to the door, your feet like lead dragging across the floorboards growing heavier with each step. We're so close. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If we get out of here, I won't even care that you murdered me anymore. (laughs) You lift your shaking hand and rest it on the door handle, but you pause before you open it, exhaustion sapping what's left of your will. Was exhaustion really the best you could muster up? It's over. There's no use stalling. Let's see what happens next. So the narrator did... Okay, so this is a clue. The narrator narrated that exhaustion caused us to stall. And Voice of the Cold just said, was exhaustion really the best you can muster up? So, perhaps the narrator does have some influence on maybe not the core events that happen, because they are not the author, but they can do slight changes during the course to try and alter the main arc of the story. Maybe. Shit. But exhaustion (laughs) wasn't enough, was it? The handle clicks as you twist it, and then the door groans open. Collapse to the ground, you and the princess, free from the confines of the cabin. As you exhale from the effort, You look up and see... Uh, yes? Nothing. He's gone, and so is everything else. So we did slay him after all. He had it coming, I suppose. But what about us? Are we just stuck here in nowhere forever? Did taking her out of the cabin really end the world? We're still here. Yeah, but that thing you said earlier, are we not part of the world anymore? 
Are we in some world that exists after the world ends, or on top of the other world but not in it, or have we never been part of the world? Okay, I've heard enough from these two. Let's see if I can pop out. <gasps> Hitchhiker, pitch up a, pick up a passenger and take her to her destination. You feel a lightness in your chest as a pair of sunken eyes emerge from your body and stare up at you. Um, oh. You actually freed me, didn't you? I'm outside. Thanks for giving me a second chance, killer. Don't mention it. I think this is where I need to be. <gasps> we brought her to the entity. You don't get the chance to respond, nor will you ever. It's time to leave. Memory returns. She's gone. W where does she go? Should we try and find her? I remember, but the hero doesn't. Oh, that mirror up there? Oh, you Why do? Why now? Of course you're scared. This is the end for you, but it's not for me. Or we could say it's going to be okay, just trust me. We've been here before and you always get scared. I don't want to say this is the end for you. I feel like that's a little bit sad. Um, I want the hero just to trust that, that, that they'll be back. But it feels so bad. Like looking into it right now is going to be the end of everything. You don't need to comfort him. <sighs> oh, at this point, I don't want to lie. I don't want to say the other side's going to be nice because it's not for him. Um, I, I just, I don't want to lie, but I don't want the voice to feel sad. I'm not going to lie. I, I don't know if that's too cruel, but I, I feel bad about lying. It's the end for you, but not for me. I would have kept them in the dark if I were you. Oh god, what's gonna happen? What is that supposed to mean? Whatever awful thing I felt before, it feels so much worse now. Let's approach the mirror. And we gaze into our reflection. Silence as you reach forward. They're gone once again. The mirror always makes them leave. But you need to see what's in it. Am I, is my reflection gonna change based on... <gasps> don't see any differences, really, but we've grown. You find yourself in the long quiet once again. Proceed to the cabin. It's, she's got a different form now. You're at the cabin. Approach her. Flickering lights in empty cityscapes become pockets of vitality and movement. I am more than I was before. Whenever you are ready, I will wipe your slate clean once again. What does it feel like to change like this? Eyes close in reflection. Perspectives meld together and the breadth of my experience stretches to new corners. There are contradictions, conflicts in my nature, and there are familiarities that bind everything together. It feels correct. This is what I need to be. This is the only path forward. So for folks who have been with me since the last Let's Play, which was in Stars and Time, I won't go into too much detail for because I don't want to spoil it for anyone who's not played or watched that series because it is absolutely wonderful. If you want to play it or watch the series, engage with that game if you can. It's beautiful. But one of the major themes in that game was this concept of change of growth, of moving forward, and of stasis, and staying still and frozen versus, again, moving and changing. And it's really incredible to be playing this game after that one because I'm seeing in some of these conversations, especially in, what is this called, The Long Quiet, with this entity, 
I think we're going to be getting more of that as we do each loop. And that's just very exciting just to have them connect like between these games. Oh, that's awesome. Um, are you the same being as you were before? How much have you changed? Is a child the same as an infant? I am an unbroken pattern, but every vessel gives fresh perspectives and carves new avenues of expression. I am different, but I am the same. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When this is all done, do you know what you want to do? With every gift you bring me, I excavate the alleys of what I am meant to be, and every exploration yields new and complicated truths. What I will be is different than what I am. What I am is different from what I was. Mm -hmm. I cannot tell you what desires I will hold when I have changed. But in this moment, all I want is to know myself and to know you. Oh. <sighs> this option of you know that at the end of this, once you're finished, I'm going to kill you. I don't know I'm going to kill this entity. I almost don't, like, I don't know, something may change, but I'm like, why? I don't have any desire to kill her at this point. Oh, this is interesting. You have been kinder to me than anyone else I've met. Why wouldn't I be kind to you? You are the only thing I know that isn't me. When I go back, it's as if an invisible wall closes around me. Why can I not do the same things I've done before? Those paths lead to worlds you've already seen, and to perspectives I have already made my own. They are useless to us now, inaccessible. Mm. The only paths of value are those that are yet untread. Okay. Do you have any thoughts on this vessel? This one is vaporous. She is a dream for a life she could never have. But that longing has given her so much capacity for kindness. She will make for an understanding heart. I feel so bad for killing her. Do not mourn her. She will finally be able to hold what she never knew. I don't want to hurt you, but the more times I go back, the worse I fear things will be. Right, because I've given you so far two hearts that and two vessels that, even though I thought maybe this one would be a little bit more aggressive, like two vessels that I think have been very open to kindness and the hope of what's to come and the possibilities of what's to come. And I wonder what's going to happen when we don't have, when we have perspectives that aren't as kind. The vessels are shaped by memories of you, but their impulses are drawn to the edge of the long quiet. To them, you are a gate to something more, and any hurt you've caused them is understood as a fair price for freedom. But they are only thoughts and perspectives. They are not me. Okay. The wounds they've suffered carve texture around my heart. Without them, I would be as I was before. I would be alone and without sensation. I could not feel the joy of having you by my side, for I would not know your absence. What do you want me to bring you next time? Gifts aren't what someone tells you to bring them. <laughs> That's fair. My joy is in seeing what you choose. There are no wrong answers and every perspective illuminates my shadows and shares new secrets. Okay. How many more vessels do I need to bring you? If I am to be an ocean, you have nurtured me into a pond. My waters are shallow and murky, and I yearn for more perspective. Okay. You will have your rest in due time, and I am sorry for the burdens I place on you. 
so you don't have any preferences on how you'd like to change or grow? My preference is for you to show me what you would like me to see. I cannot know the ways I wish to grow, for I have yet to feel them. It is you who guides me down the thin trail of perspective and memory. I am not a parent, but I feel like as a parent, the sentiment of I cannot know the ways I wish to grow for I have yet to feel them. It's you who guides me down the thin trail of perspective and memory. I feel almost like a parent to this entity. And I'm, I feel like as someone who is exposing this entity to new perspectives, I do wish to only give them the good things, but I understand how that may not be of service in the end because they would not be prepared in the end to grapple with any bad that may come along in their life. I don't even know if life is the right word to put in there. Because I imagine if you're a parent raising a child, it's like you don't want your kid to experience anything bad, but at the same time, you need to provide them opportunities to feel adversity in sort of a safe form so that when they do face adversity in the world, they aren't just like decimated. But I don't, I don't think I even really understand what I'm preparing the entity for. And this idea of, like, once you're finished, I'm going to kill you. Is that certain? Like, am I supposed to be feeling that? I don't think I feel that. I don't want to attack the entity. I don't want to kill them. I, I, I don't know if I should be feeling that. And I've missed something very obvious. Because maybe, maybe this entity wants to destroy the world, but... I don't know why, maybe it's the music. For some reason, I feel like the entity almost cares more about the world and about learning than destroying anything, at least at this point. So I don't know if I even want to explore this because I don't even want to approach the question with her. to go back. I'm not going to ask that yet. I will long for your return, but it will give me time to reflect on what I am. We will meet again. Yeah. <gasps> oh, jeez. <laughs> Jump scare with the sound. Once again, the glass breaks. An evanescent vessel bring the specter to her. Okay. You're on a path in the woods. Yes, yes, yes. And at the end of that path... Is a cabin. Hello, narrator. We and in the meet basement again. of that cabin is a princess. <laughs> now, really quick, You're I'm kind of curious. The end of the world, what are you talking about? Because she's locked up. Okay, so this once again, all the same. I could even say Viva la Revolution again. Hmm. But the vessel entity did say that. I won't, previous paths that I've unlocked are inaccessible now. So I'm hoping that I, my one worry with this game as we progress is that there are so many seemingly branching options. I'm worried that I'm gonna miss something because I didn't do the exact right combination of things. Uh, and I'm sure there's, there's maybe perspectives that will have to be more specific in reaching. And intentional in reaching, but I'm, I'm hoping that I don't have too much repeat. Um, but I, I, I assume, again, because of what the entity said, that that's going to be at a minimum, probably. Um, but that's it for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you're enjoying this. It's interesting because I'm so used to reading very, like all of the dialogue, and it's quite quite nice to be able to play and just listen to the voice acting of Jonathan and Nicole. Uh, it almost, I hope, perhaps this is something that you could even listen to almost in podcast form, like even though it's not a podcast, but perhaps you could even just listen to this almost like a episodes of a horror narrative anthology uh, with each. It seems like each episode will approach a perspective of the princess. And I know this is probably a slower way to play this. I think other folks I've talked to mentioned this game 
you know, probably being able to <laughs> complete the game in like four, three or four hours, which I've only, sp I've already spent two hours playing just for two loops. So I'm going with the traditional turtle gameplay, um, taking it slow, savoring every bit, and hopefully you are doing the same with me. Um, let me know what you thought of the specter. If you have any theories or anything that maybe in the specter specifically that that you think I should pay attention to as we go into the next loop but that'll be in the next video um, if you enjoy discussing games please check out geeks and grounds it's the game club that I host where myself and Joel uh, we lead discussions surrounding one game a month that we play as a community uh, in the Kinchikas cafe discord and you can go to geeksandgrounds.com to see all of the news how to sign up for the newsletter listen to the podcast all that good stuff and find me on tiktok and twitch where i will eventually be streaming more actively right now i'm honing in and focusing on youtube um, but i have created content on those other platforms i will do so again just trying to work in that life work life balance <laughs> making sure i i am taking time for myself um, and family and everything so yeah that's it for today. I hope you have a wonderful day or night wherever you are. You find lots of games to play, and I will see you in the next loop again, I guess. Ready to save the world. Bye!